My name is Javier Hernandez and my nickname is Chicharito. What is up guys? This is Luke Hill for Kit Guru, and in this one we're taking a look at what could very well be our last high-end kit of DDR4 memory that we review, with DDR5 just around the corner. And if it does indeed prove to be the last high-end set of DDR4 that we do review, then we look to be perhaps going out on a high, because this is the G-Skill Trident Z Royal memory. Basically, what we've got here is a 32GB kit of dual-channel, dual-rank memory, 4000 megahertz C17 at 1.4 volts Samsung B die. This is pretty nice indeed, but we'll have to check the performance numbers to see just how nice it is. So let's watch on. Before we go any further though, if you like what we do here at Kikuru, then make sure you give us a like and subscribe, hit the bell icon, do all that YouTube stuff. It really helps us grow the channel, really helps us push towards our next one of these that we're really happy with, and we hope you have enjoyed the content over time. You can join our channel as a member, that's a really cool new feature, and make sure you check out the Kikuru website as always. Let's jump back into the review. As we already mentioned in the introduction, the G-Skill Trident Z Royal Memory has some pretty impressive specs for our kit in particular. So you've got a 4000 MHz operating frequency and of course that's using XMP support. You've got 17, 18, 18 on the timings run at 1.4 volts. So yes, the voltage is a little bit higher than the 1.35 we typically see, but for 4000 C17, I'm absolutely fine with 1.4 volts. As we already said, this is a 32 gigabyte kit. So you've got two 16 gigabyte DIMMs and they're Samsung BDI ICs, which means they're dual channel and dual rank. So in other words, 4000 megahertz, tight timings, reasonable voltage, dual rank, BDI ICs, this is going to be absolutely glorious on AMD, we think, depending on how you tune that fabric clock. And if you want the precise model code of the kit that we're reviewing, so the silver version, then actually this is F4-4000C17D-32GTRSB. In terms of styling, this is the usual Trident Z appeal, but with the Royal Flare added. So obviously the version that we've got of the Royal is silver, but you do get it in gold if you prefer. You've got the usual Trident Z tri-fin heatsink design, which I must say I really do personally like. It's functional as a heatsink, but it looks good. And at about 44 millimeters for the entire module, it's not overly tall to be perfectly honest. So CPU coolant interference from Triton Z that we've used over the years really isn't that bad at all. And then if we look at the physical heatsink itself, G-Skill is using an aluminium material and it is heavily, heavily polished, electro plated, complete fingerprint magnet. But by default, you do get this protective sticker on there. Give me a thumb up if you like that appeal. I hope that was pretty good. And now I'm completely scared to touch this module because it's basically, yeah, it's mirror finish. You're probably gonna see the camera when I hold it up there. And as soon as I touch this with a fingerprint, yeah, that's pretty nasty. Good looking set of modules, check. Complete fingerprint magnet, check. G-Skill does, however, include a nice cloth as part of the bundle, but do watch out for this cloth. I did actually uh, scratch the module. It must have been a piece of dirt or something on there when I was giving it a wipe a few seconds ago. So yeah, watch out for that. Definitely leave that protective plastic on until the very final stage of your build. LED lighting for the Trident Z Royal sticks is handled by eight controllable zones atop the module, so these RGB zones. And these sit in this kind of crystal crown jewel appearance diffuser, basically. It's, it's more or less plastic. But I do like the appearance of this crystalline heat spreader. It's unique. It does a good job at diffusion of the actual RGB lighting, in my opinion. It makes eight zones perfectly fine, because you could squeeze more in, I guess. But with the diffusion here, you get a nice blend of the colors. And the brightness of the actual RGB lighting is good. I just, I really quite like the, the crown jewel design, whatever you want to call it. That's what G-Skill calls it because it's just unique. It's something quite different in my opinion. But if you disagree, let me know in the comment section down below. And in terms of RGB synchronization, G-Skill does actually offer their own tool that you can download online. And this gives you some pretty decent basic functionality. You get to control the eight individual RGB zones with basic color control, and you get some more advanced modes such as rainbow and the likes. You can actually use Razer Chroma Sync through the G-Skill software, or if you want to sync up the modules with the rest of your hardware, you can use your motherboard vendor's RGB sync tool. And using our Asus motherboard, we found that the synchronization with these G-Skill modules was actually very good through Aura. Yeah. Yeah. 
Anyway, I think that's enough for the core overview of the Triton Z Royal RGB memory modules. This specific kit that we're testing in typical G-Skill fashion is somewhat non-existent on the UK market and finding accurate pricing this side of the pond is just, well, it's just hopeless. It's just a pointless task, quite frankly. In the US, this kit retails for about $329 on Newegg at the moment, which is very expensive for a 32 gig kit. Let's not joke about that. However, when you look at some of the competitors, such as the more premium Corsair modules or something more premium from Crucial and the Ballistics lineup, the pricing doesn't seem all that bad, to be perfectly fair. So we'll have to see how the performance stands when we put it to the test. Let's jump into that. For testing, we're using our AMD Zen 3 platform, and this is built around the Ryzen 9 5950X processor overclocked to a static 4.6 gigahertz. We've got an Asus Crosshair 8 Hero motherboard, and we're using a Gigabyte RTX 3080 Eagle OC graphics card. We've mentioned in previous reviews of memory the headaches of running a 4 gigahertz kit on the AMD platform. If your CPU can do 2000 megahertz fabric clock, fantastic, 4 gigahertz out of the box is really a dream. Our CPU seems to like 1900 megahertz fabric clock and not 2 gigahertz. So in that case, we're going to be running these modules at 3800 megahertz so that we can run that 1900 megahertz fabric clock one to one with the memory controller clock rather than interpret the two to one divider. We think this is the best balance, but we will be testing the other mode. So four gigahertz XMP out of the box where you get the two to one memory controller divider. And if you want more information on that fabric and memory controller divider, then check out our previous reviews, especially the Clev four gigahertz DDR4 kit that we reviewed quite recently. Another minor point I will clarify with the AMD platform is that even though this is technically a C17 kit, when you're running high speed memory like this, the AMD system does like to go for even numbers on the latencies. So even though XMP is putting C17 timings in through the motherboard, the actual operating for the cast latency is C18. And as always, if you want more details on our test hardware, our configurations, our software, check out the written review on the KitGuru website. 7-zip compression performance absolutely flies with the dual rank G-Skill kit run at 3800MHz C18. Even at a reduced CPU memory controller clock, the 4GHz performance is also still strong. Focusing on decompression, the 4GHz set enjoys a chart top and result here, beating out Corsair's fast 3600MHz kits in our data set. Blender is very CPU heavy and shows basically no performance difference between these high speed kits of memory. And similar can be said for Cinebench R20 NT, though G-Skill does manage impressive first and third place finishes. Memory bandwidth is where high speed dual rank DDR4 does well, especially if the AMD CPU memory controller clock is running at a solid frequency. And the latency performance from the 3800MHz C18 test runs is heavily impressive. Corsair's slick 3600MHz C16 kit is effectively matched at the top of the chart by G-Skill's Trident Z Royal. In 3 d Mark, we once again see a chart topping showing from the G-Skill memory run at 3800MHz C18 with the 1.9GHz memory controller clock function. And the same high level of performance is maintained in Shadow of the Tomb Raider when at 3800C18 once again. In terms of overclocking, I'd say we actually had a very good deal of success from the Trident Z Royal memory modules. The best result that we reached was using the 3800 MHz frequency that we've already seen that our system likes. And we managed to tighten the timings all the way to 14, 14, 14, 36, which is pretty impressive at 1.45 volts in my opinion. That does represent a solid improvement over the 17, 18, 18 stock timings for a relatively reasonable voltage bump. So 3800 MHz, 14, 14, 14, 36, 1.45 volts. How can you not love Samsung b -Dai? It's just glorious. It's fantastic. This was a quick and dirty overclock. Results that I'm pretty happy with for a 32 gigabyte kit. There's probably more in the tank, but I'm cool with that. And I was, uh, yeah, pretty happy with the overclock in the Lego. To summarize briefly, because there, quite frankly, isn't all that much that needs to be said. The G-Skill Trident Z Royal memory kit is just absolutely superb. Our 4000 C17 rated test kit delivered absolutely fantastic performance at the 3800 MHz C17 or C18 if you prefer testing that we did with the 1900 MHz fabric and memory controller clock tie-in. 
most of the time the 32 gigabyte dual RAM kit was at the top of our chart or very close to the top of our chart and even in the 4000 megahertz mode which is slightly less preferential on some of the CPU tie-in frequencies we still saw solid performance throughout testing. When you factor in the 3800 megahertz 1414 14 overclock with just a small voltage bump then yeah performance on tap is pretty evident here in my opinion. And keeping on the, in my opinion, topics, I'd say aesthetics are absolutely glorious. I really do like the styling. I like the premium polished finish of this aluminium heat spreader, especially inside a build where you've got RGB lighting pinging all over the place. This reflective finish for the heat spreader really works well, in my opinion. You might dislike it, and that's completely fine. It is a complete fingerprint magnet, and that is quite frustrating if I'm being perfectly honest, even though you do get a cloth included by G-Skill. But then when you factor in the kind of crown jewel light bar, if you like, I really like the styling. But sound off in the comments section down below what you like and you dislike about the aesthetics of this module because it's very much down to individual preference. Anyway, rounding out, I'm basically struggling to see any major downsides for the G-Skill Trident Z Royal memory, performance, aesthetics, RGB lighting. You can even throw overclocking into the mix. It ticks all of the boxes as far as I'm concerned. The key disappointment realistically is one for us UK readers and viewers because the availability this side of the pond is just absolutely dire. I don't even know what the actual UK pricing is because obviously pricing is all over the place. So it's pointless asking for the MSRP and you can't even find it on sale anyway. So that is disappointing. For our US readers then $329 on Newegg doesn't seem all that bad from what I can see for competing really high, ultra high-end modules from the likes of Corsair or Crucial, for example. But if you're more au fait with the US memory market and you think I'm incorrect, then tell me in the comments section down below. I'd love to hear your opinion. For now, though, this G-Skill Trident Z Royal Memory sits very high in our individual preference for DDR4 memory kits. I really do like what G-Skill has done here, so all I can say is roll on another success for DDR5. Thank you for watching our video review of the G-Skill Trident Z Royal Memory. Let us know what you think in the comments section down below. Do you like the aesthetics? Do you like the styling of that crown jewel light bar? Were you pretty happy with the overclocking performance and the out-of-the-box numbers? Let us know in the comment section down below. If you like this review, give us a like and subscribe. Do all that YouTube stuff. You can join us as a member on YouTube. Get some cool perks there. And as always, make sure you check out the Kikuru website for the written information that really supports us. And I will see you in the next one.